His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Minister of Youth Affairs Rawan bint Najib Tawfiqi on the occasion of Bahrain Youth Day, which falls on March 25th. Tawfiqi affirmed that this national occasion reflects the support the Bahraini youth receive from His Majesty and His Majesty's belief in the importance of the youth and their creative energies and impact and the sustainability of the comprehensive development march as they are the country's wheel of wealth. She added that celebrating this occasion reflects the support of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa of the youth sector and in light of the support and initiatives of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work in Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The minister said that Bahrain Youth Day is an opportunity to highlight the youth's efforts and role in the development march. She prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty the King with good health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of congratulations from the Minister of Youth Affairs Rawan bint Najim Tawqifi on the occasion of the Bahrain Youth Day observed on March 25th. The minister noted that this national occasion reflects His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's commitment to supporting Bahrain's youth as well as His Majesty's belief in their impact on the country's comprehensive development as the real wealth of the country. Tawfiqi added that the celebration of Bahrain Youth Day showcases the government's commitment led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to fostering young talents by supporting initiatives and programs that enhance their skills and expertise. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 14 of 2024 amending some provisions of Edict 28 of 2006 regarding the establishment and formation of the National Committee for Civil Emergency Management based on a proposal by the Minister of Interior and following the approval of the Cabinet. The edict stipulates the following. Article 1 and new clause numbered 16 will be added to Article 1 of Edict 28 of 2006 regarding the establishment and formation of the National Committee for Civil Emergency Management and the remaining clauses of the article will be renumbered accordingly as follows. 16. Commander of the Royal Medical Services RMS of Bahrain Defense Force Hospitals representing RMS. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 15 of 2024 amending some provisions of Edict 44 of 2022 regarding the establishment and formation of the Government Land Investment Committee. The edict stipulates the following. Article 1, Clause 1 of Article 1 of Edict 44 of 2022 regarding the establishment and formation of the Government Land Investment Committee shall be replaced with the following clause. 1. The Under Secretary for Research and Project at the Prime Minister's Office as Chairperson. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 16 of 2024, amending some provisions of Edict 6 of 2022, restructuring the Government Service Center Evaluation Committee Taqeem. The edict stipulates the following. Article 1, Clause 2 of Article 1 of Edict 6 of 2022 regarding restructuring the Government Service Center Evaluation Committee shall be replaced with the following clause. Ahmed Khalid Al Arifi as member. The Shura Council held its weekly session presided over by its chairman, Ali As Saleh. The council approved a draft, a decree law on the registration, safety, and control regulations for small vessels, which aims to unify the provisions for small vessels related to maritime navigation. They also approved a proposal on regulating fishing and the utilization and protection of marine wealth. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa met in the presence of the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications Thamar Al Kaabi and the Minister of Works Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, the Saudi Minister of Transport and Logistics Services Engineer Saleh Al Jasser.
The Deputy Prime Minister welcomed the Saudi minister and his delegation, affirming that the visit embodies the necessity for exchanging technical and practical experiences, particularly in the future of transportation, to adopt the latest transport methods. He affirmed the importance of strengthening the strategic partnership between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia to support efforts aimed at achieving further integration in various fields by building on the achievements made as a result of the historical fraternal relations that serve a common goals under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. The Deputy Premier noted the cooperation and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud to achieve common visions through qualitative initiatives that bolster bilateral work. For his part, the Saudi minister thanked the deputy premier for the meeting, asserting that the deep-rooted bilateral relations are an incentive to continue coordination. He wished Bahrain continued progress and prosperity. Under the patronage of the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, SCYS, chairman of the General Sports Authority, GSA, and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, BOC, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the final of the second edition of Khalid bin Hamad Gold Generation League for Volleyball for the club's category was held. GSA Deputy Chairman His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa attended the finals. Dar Klib Club defeated Al Ahli Club at the Isa bin Rashid Volleyball Hall to keep the title. GSA CEO Dr. Abdul Rahman Askarin, President of Bahrain Volleyball Association, Sheikh Ali bin Mohammed Al Khalifa crowned the winning team with the League Shield and Gold Medals and crowned Al Ahli with the Silver Medals. His Highness Sheikh Salman expressed his appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa for his patronage of the league, congratulating Dari Kleib for winning the title, praising the team's levels along the competition to win the championship. He praised the Bahrain Volleyball Association's organization of the event and the participation of various clubs, a technical and administrative staff, and various media outlets in supporting the GSA initiative. Bahrain's delegation of the Parliamentary Division participated in the 148th Inter-Parliamentary Union IPU Assembly and the 213th Session of the Governing Council in Geneva. The delegation appraised the vision presented by the IPU President and her ambitious aspirations to enhance the relations between the international parliaments and her affirmation of developing parliamentary dialogues and valuable discussions between representatives of parliaments. During the meeting of the Governing Council, a report on the activities and programs of the Executive Committee was presented since the last session of the Council. The heads and representatives of parliaments were also briefed on the report of the IPU Secretary General on the activities carried out by the General Secretariat of the Union during the past year. The first deputy chairman of the Shura Council, head of Bahrain's parliamentary division delegation, participated in the meeting of the 148th General Assembly of the IPU. Jamal Mohammed Fakhro affirmed interest of the legislative authority in strengthening partnerships and extending bridges of cooperation and coordination with parliaments and legislative councils in brotherly and friendly countries. Fakhro expressed pride in the valuable contributions of Bahraini parliamentary diplomacy as participations in continuous keenness to support parliamentary work at the Arab, regional and international levels. During a meeting between the Bahraini delegation and the Secretary General of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Association of Southeast Asian Countries, CT Hajji Abdul Rahman, Fakhru appreciated the invitation of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Southeast Asian Association to the Kingdom to join the association to deepen the strong relations between the two sides. Shura Council Secretary General Karima Mohammed Al Abbasi participated in the Association of Secretaries General of Parliament's meetings on the sidelines of the 148th General Assembly of the Interparliamentary Union.
Al Abbasi confirmed that the General Secretariat of the Council is proud of its development and progress, and a typical and distinguished investment for digital tools and applications. She noted that the General Secretariat adopts a number of advanced digital tools in registering and preserving the efforts of the Shura members and highlighting their participation through digital platforms and comprehensive annual reports. Al Abbasi said that the digital transformation in the work of the General Secretariat is an essential part of its vision and strategy for the upcoming years, especially with the growing use of artificial intelligence systems. First Deputy Speaker Abd Nabi Salman stressed the necessity of drafting international legislation which addresses legal, moral and technical problems related to autonomous weapons and artificial intelligence. The delegation presented a number of amendments and proposals to include it in a draft resolution of IPU Committee on Peace and International Security regarding addressing the social and humanitarian impact of autonomous weapon systems and artificial intelligence. They stress the necessity of enacting legislation that criminalizes and prohibits the use of autonomous weapon systems targeting humans. The delegation highlighted the importance of finding an international document that defines aspects of safe use of artificial intelligence in addition to showing the risks and potential effects of the particularities and rights of individuals, especially with regard to the use of data and information in illegal ways. Shura Council member, member of the Bureau of Women Parliamentarians, Hala Ramzi Fayez, participated in a discussion panel organized by the Forum of Women Parliamentarians entitled Women Peace Builders Advancing Sustainable Peace. She emphasized the role of women in decision making and political participation in achieving comprehensive and sustainable solutions to conflicts. Hala Ramzi noted the need to provide the appropriate environment and support for women to continue their work safely and effectively. She explained that women's participation in peace building faces many obstacles and risks, calling for the importance of approving laws and policies that protect women's rights in conflict areas. The delegation of the Parliamentary Division participated in the meeting of the IPU Committee on Sustainable Development. Shura Council member Dr. Bassam Ismail al bin Mohammed confirmed that the climate justice requires building effective and responsible participations between the parliaments of all countries of the world and international organizations and institutions concerned with confronting climate change, with the aim of ensuring the commitment of major countries to supporting poor and developing countries to enable the to address the effects of climate change. He pointed out that the increasing parliamentary and international interest by discussing and researching the risk of climate change reflects the keenness to develop unified visions contributing to supporting the ongoing international efforts to mitigate the repercussions of climate change. Members of the Parliamentary Division Delegation MP Hassan Ibrahim Hassan and Shura member Dr. Bassam Ismail al bin Mohammed participated in the Forum of Young Parliamentarians. MP Hassan Ibrahim Hassan confirmed that the Bahraini youth contributions to parliamentary and legislative work embodies the vision of His Majesty the King to empower young people and to enhance their strategic and pivotal role in the field of national and developmental work. He noted that Bahrain has made a milestone in the field of empowering youth and motivating them to participate in various parts of life. He pointed out that Bahrain pays attention to rooting the parliamentary work among young people based on educational process in schools, universities and institutions, as well as government interest in educating students in legislative work. The Government Service Center's Evaluation Committee held its ninth meeting, headed by the Chairman of the Committee and CEO of the Information and E-Government Authority, Mohamed Al-Qaid, by examining the outcomes of the fourth session of the Government Service Center's Evaluation Program, Taqim 4. The committee also discussed the program and the factors that contributed to the success of the session's work and reviewed the development plans at the government service centers that did not meet 75% of the basic standards according to the Guide for Evaluating Customer Experiences in Government Service Centers. 
The committee also discussed a mechanism to link the excellent government employee program and customer service with Taqeem, which would motivate employees and increase competitiveness to develop work mechanisms and provide the best services to citizens, residents, visitors and business owners. The Kingdom of Bahrain has won the 12th edition of the Dubai Holy Quran competition for people with determination. Noor Abdul Razak won first place in the memorization of the entire Quran and the best recitation categories in the competition. And Muhammad Al Umari won first place in the category of memorizing the entire Quran. These achievements come in light of the royal support of His Majesty, the King, and the follow up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to those who have memorized the entire Quran and its teachings. Bahrain is moving towards a more sustainable future in the transition to investing in green economy, which is translated by the National Action Plan and the National Energy Strategy, which were announced during COP28. The plan and strategy demonstrated Bahrain's commitment to reducing carbon emissions by 30% by 2035 and achieving carbon neutrality by 2060. The National Action Plan seeks to achieve carbon neutrality through, through three pillars, a low-carbon economy, adaptation to climate change, and creating investment opportunities in the new green economy, while the National Energy Strategy aims to reach its goal through improving energy demand, diversifying energy sources, and deploying carbon reduction technologies to remove carbon from difficult sectors. In light of the many methodologies for dealing with decarbonization varying between regulatory frameworks and initiatives led by different industry sectors, Bahrain was able to benefit from the various components to create a model consistent with its goals and partnership between the government and the industrial sector. The Coast Guard continues its inspection and awareness campaigns in marine and coastal areas in association with concerned bodies to enforce the law, eliminate violations in Bahrain's territorial waters, ensure adherence to decisions regulating fishing and the validity of vessels' licenses in addition to the availability of marine safety tools. The Coast Guard is keen to increase land and marine campaigns to protect maritime security and eliminate violations and law-breaking activities. Activities. 